Well, you're here again. Praise God. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about, I, I wish, uh, you know, we have Billy Graham classics on right. Sunday nights. And I was watching last night. See, oh, I'll say, uh, and, and they had two stadiums full of people. This big football stadium full and the, and the overflow stadium. But he got to see all this. And, and I don't get to see all of you out there. All I can see is this hole in that camera, but I know you're there. And that's what's important. And Father, I thank you and I praise you for every one of them and whatever country they're in, and it all over the world. The body of Christ is thriving in the midst of chaos. Yes. To those that have learned to live by faith and cause and learn that their words count, their thoughts count, their decisions count. And for their own believing and standing on your word. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, I want to mention this. My, uh, my, my dad was never without a job 24 hours during the Great Depression. They were married in December 1927. So, Lindbergh flew the Atlantic. But the best decision they ever made was to tithe consistently. My dad's dad taught him to tithe. My, my mother, my, my grandfather uh, was cause of no fault of his own, but he didn't have formal education at all. And, but my grandmother, whoa, you talk <laughs> about a tither, but I'm telling you, that Southern Baptist woman, I mean, you're gonna pay those tithes. And my grandfather, he kind of graphed about it a little bit, but he, he and, but then he'd smile about it, he knew. Because she'd show it to him in the Bible. That's right. And they made the decision to tithe during very, very hard times. Because of Malachi 3.10. Right. God won't force you to do that. No, 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 no. And uh, she said, she said, Kenneth, they lived out in the country, of course, and she said, I would watch him just as far as I could see him. And I'd pray all day long. And sure enough, he'd come back home with a job. And so, and it was part of that that shaped my life because he had gone early, early to a... Uh, Cotton gin. Now, if you're not from Texas, I'm not talking about gin like you drink, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you gin cotton. And that, that raw cotton's got a lot of trash and stuff right. in it. And you take it in there and then they, they, they have ma equipment machines that tear those things apart and clean out and, and, and then bale it. Well, it's quite a process. Yeah, dirty and dangerous job. Yes, it is. Yeah. And... Uh, so he had, like his dad taught him, he was there for daylight, standing on the front door, right? and the guy opened the door. Now my dad's very positive, man. He didn't say, y'all got any jobs? No. He said, what do you want? My dad said, I've come to go to work for you. Now that's the positive way. Mm -hmm. I've come to go to work for you because that he, they, he just had it in his heart to go there. Can you keep books? Yes, sir. Come on in. I said, well, Dad, have you taken the bookkeeping class? He said, no. But he said, I knew. He said, now, Kenneth, you know that I'm good at, at math. I said, yes, sir. He said, you, I knew if I could f follow the former bookkeeper's ledger. Yes. But he said, then that's the reason I went to Drones Business College in Lubbock, Texas to take a course on bookkeeping. Then I was born in Lubbock, December the 6th, 1936. Now listen to these decisions and how it changed my life. My dad made a critical decision at that point. Now this is, 
1936. The country's still in depression. They came to him and said, Copeland, we have two jobs available. Two jobs in 1936. Whoa. But he had to make a decision. Yeah. They said, we, we would just, we would really like for you to come uh, here at the, at the school and teach here in the school on a guaranteed salary. He said, what's the other one? Well, he said, that they, he, that's in Abilene, Texas. He said, well, what, what's the deal with that? Oh, he said, that one's all commission. That, my dad said, I'll take that one. Well, the man offering the job couldn't understand why. I didn't either. <laughs> Make more. Young, I said, Dad, why did you do that? He said, if I worked for salary, and I, now you young people listen to me, if I work for a salary, they're going to keep most of it. My decision was to take the commission, and I'm in control of the money that I earn. I work hard. Tithe, then I control the income. Listening to God, mm -hmm. being led of God to take that job. So he said, I took that job. And, uh, and so he just kept going up. And then he took a job with National Oil Line Insurance Company in Little Rock, Arkansas. I look back now. That was the Spirit of God. Yeah. Because in uh, October of 1961, TCU was playing Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, you met the prettiest girl in Arkansas. I did. <laughs> 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 now, I made an outstanding decision yeah. to marry that yeah. woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, you talk about yeah. a, a God-led decision because then the, then the Lord said it to me while I was in Tulsa. He directs your steps, Brother Copeland, yes. means you're moving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Many religious people have so much difficulty truly believing God because religion has taught them don't make a choice. That God is sovereign and he is supreme and he decides our destiny. That the greatest prayer of all, if it be your, your will. will. Yes, that's right. That God is in control, so I don't need to do anything. You're fixing to get stomped. Yeah. <laughs> because the God of this world will take his place. I knew so many kids when I was young in, in youth camp that they wouldn't fully commit to God because they didn't want to go on the mission field. They wanted to live their life before they would commit to God because he was going to ask them to do something they didn't want to do. He didn't do that. Mm -mm. that that's not who he is. And, and so if you learn, and so what happens is, is then you get people that want to be in somebody else's place. Somebody will build something and they, they're, they're jealous of did it. Did you notice what Heidi Baker did yesterday in that service? She changed the shoes. shoes. That's right. With this great big man. Very big, very fine, one of the, One of the finest, sweetest men in God yeah. I have ever met in yeah. my life. Yeah. But he's a big man. We we all there yesterday yeah. to see that. And he's got on these little bit, and she's walking around in these shoes and three or four times, but she just had to drag them. Yeah. She said, Don't walk in somebody else's shoes. Mm -hmm. You walk in your shoes. You walk in the shoes that God put on you. Example is third John. That's it. Over in 3 John, we're talking about getting, making a choice, making a decision. We've talked about getting your spirit in shape, and now we're kind of talking about getting your soulish realm in shape. And in 3 John. Greg, before you read that, yeah. this is the scripture that convinced Oral Roberts that we're supposed to prosper. Wow. Wow. He had... He, uh, Evelyn saw it. Mm -hmm. She said, Oral, stop the car. He stopped. 
she got out. She was, had her Bible. She got out and laid her Bible on top of the car and said, or listen to this, beloved, I wish or I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health and as, as your soul prospers. He said, is that in the Bible? <laughs> Oral Roberts said, yeah. is that in the Bible? Now they'd lived all through all the depression right. and all of that. Yes, we're supposed to prosper and be in hell. Well, religion tradition won't teach that to you. Go on down, go next verse, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. That's a decision. Mm -hmm. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. You go on and you read this entire passage and you'll see mm. that there was somebody over here in verse nine. Oh, that I wrote into the church, uh, but this guy here, Diophrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. That's a bad choice. Yeah. <laughs> Wherefore, if I come, I'll remember his deeds, which he does prating against us with malicious words, not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbid them that they would cast them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that does good is of God, and he that does evil, evil hasn't seen God. You talk a man uh, so full of pride. Here is a man that lived with the master. Here is a man that was in that last supper. Here is a man that had been in the empty tomb. And here is another man that has an empty head. Jesus gave that man charge of his own mother. Yeah. Yes, he did. And here <laughs> is this mule-headed. Well, he's trying to walk in somebody else's shoes. That's right. He wanted preeminence. You can't get preeminence over another man. See, this That's is- That's not your decision. Yeah. yeah. It's getting your soulish realm. What's right in front of that? Prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your mind, will, and emotion. He got puffed up in his mind. So what's preeminence? Pride. That's it. So we go over to Philippians chapter four. That's reading had such a dumb name. <laughs> Diotrephes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, it proves he was a Greek. Yeah, right. No, you're right. You're right. Philippians chapter, well, he's, he's probably very educated. The Greeks loved education and mental, he's probably very much that way. I don't know, I'm speculating. Well, and here's a young man who hadn't been to school. No, John. <laughs> well, he had been to school, yeah. but a different <laughs> school well, of I, the spirit. And you know what they said about them. <sighs> These are ignorant and, and men, unlearned. but they have been with Jesus. That's it, that's it. So I forgive Diatra, whatever his name is. I have to, I must. Right. Yes. Because he's educated beyond his intellect. And there are other people that are like that when it comes to spiritual things. Right, so it's making the choice to get our mind, will, and emotions mm -hmm. in line with our spirit. Philippians chapter four. Now wait a minute, there's yeah. another thing here. The people that got kicked out of the church have a decision to make. Oh, that's good. Well, what do I need to do? Forgive him, get mad at him, go find me another church? This is the valley of decision. Yes, sir. There's no such thing as a day without decision. You'd have to be asleep all day, but you had to make a decision to sleep all day to not make a decision. You, you, you. They were cut off. When you do that, you're cutting yourself off from the head of the church. Mm -hmm. And I think Heidi Baker's example that she had with the chicken, that got its head cut off, yes. and it's just flopping around everywhere. And it didn't even realize no. that it was separated from the church, and that's what happens in our churches. People get separated from the head of the church, and they're busy. She <laughs> was talking dead. about callings and so forth. But, but now, the chicken has wings, mm -hmm. but the chicken can't fly. What, right. a, what are chicken's wings for? To raise her children. No. Jesus said so. That's right. Like a hen. I've seen them do it. 
And he said, I desire to do that for you, but you, you, chose, you chose to make to. a decision not to. I've seen him, I've seen him do it. <clears throat> a little storm come up, and I mean, you got a bunch of little, little yellow chicks running around out there, and, she, and she'll <laughs> and do this, and whoo, here they come. Get all up under her, and she just walks down like this. She'd rather take the storm mm. than to have it hurt her family. That's the way we should be in our churches. Yes. Let me show you Philippians 4, talking about getting our, making a choice with our soul. Um, 4, verse 8, Find the brethren, whatsoever things are true, oh, yeah. whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We have to make that choice. God does not force your thoughts on you at all. You choose what you think on. And now as, an, and as a believer, I have access to the mind of Christ that I didn't have before. Sure. I don't have to say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. I can't remember what I should do here. I used to, Greg. Mm -hmm. I would get an airplane. The day I soloed, I didn't pray about that. I wasn't saved. I was excited. I wanted to fly that thing by myself. I had no fear about it. I was not against prayer. I was, and, and I did pray. Scared prayers. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it never crossed my mind to pray about that. That's this way. I never made the decision to pray about all things. Like Jesus said in 18th chapter of Luke, men ought to always pray and not faint. Here's the difference now. If I'm flying, I'm in the cockpit before I ever do anything. I'm thinking about Saturday, Dwayne and I were, were about to go fly. And so we just, of course, I've done this with him and, 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 and the crew does it too. I just, we just bow our heads. I say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over this airplane today for protection against every evil spirit, every evil person, every evil thing, every evil plan of the devil is bound and stopped and thwarted. Ministering spirits, lift us up in your hands lest we dash our foot against a stone and keep us in all of our ways according to the 91st Psalm and bless our partners all over the world. And Lord, today, uh, I have the mind of Christ, but I, today I have the flying mind of Christ. Yes. And Lord, all the things that you've taught me over the years concerning flying from your word and, and in other things and in other ways, and I receive all of those things into my mind that I don't forget anything that I've received from my instructors, anything I've learned from Dwayne or Steve or, and all the things I've learned from you in Jesus' name, amen. Now let's start this thing. I don't ever fly without it. And I'm back in the cabin. I never go in it. I never get, don't fire up an engine until that prayer is prayed. That's right. It's an established. Yes. It is established. My heart and mind are fixed, trusting in the Lord. So you're setting a fix, if you will, setting a direction for a spirit-controlled mind rather than a natural-controlled mind. Back before when we would go on airlines, I had the Lord say to me one time, he said, there's coming a time when the airlines will not be fit to fly and right now you start believing God for, for your jets and you start believing, he said, this, that time is coming. Well, it came quickly. And, but there were times we didn't have an airplane that would go overseas, so we had to ride other airplanes. So we'd get on the airplane, I'd take my, boarding pass. And, I, and Gloria and I would catch hands and I would say, Father, we own this space right here. Mm -hmm. You paid for it. We paid for it. Yep. This is ours. So the rest of the airplane is wrapped around it. Then we would pray that prayer. And we pray you, to, and we thank you that we will come back to this spot and we will thank you for an uneventful trip Yes. Yeah. 
there never was even an incident on an airplane. Now, Jesse did plant us, several of them. The devil tried to kill him on airplanes, and one time, yeah, they, he just went up and took the mic away from the stewardess and started praying over the whole thing. <laughs> Flaps wouldn't come down. That's a bad deal in the big earth. Yes, earth. sir. But they did. <laughs> <laughs> so you make a choice to uh, account for every idle word. You either don't say it or you repent of what you said. Now, you just hit on, in my opinion, concerning decision and thought and words. Jesus said you'll be condemned by your words, mm -hmm. justified by your words, and you will be held responsible for every idle word that proceeds out of your mouth. What is an idle mm. word? Mm. Well, I'll see y'all later if a train don't hit me. Ha, 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 ha. Just did it. That sounds funny but it is not. That young man that Brother Hagin told the story about, mm -hmm. he said, you know, now, this young man is born again, spirit-filled. He and his brother were so close, born so close together, they were almost like twins. And he, he, his brother said when he gets serious, he said, you know, I'll never live to be 50. Mm -hmm. And he just said it all the time while Brother Hagin was praying in the spirit over this young man. And, he's, and, and the, the, the spirit of God said, certain spiritual laws have been put in motion that cannot be changed mm -hmm. at this time. I'll never touch it again in my thought life. That's what Brother Hagin would always say yeah. whenever something like that happened. He died just a few months before his 50th birthday. Is that God's fault? No. No. That was an idle word that he said most of his life. Mm -hmm. But he said it so many times it took over his life, and we're out of time. Mm. I don't want to quit. Do I don't either. Anyway, we'll be back in a little bit. Hello, my name is Spencer Nordyke. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Jesus came to provide a way for you to be made righteous or right with God. Righteousness is God's power at work in your spirit, soul, and body to make everything right just like God is right. When the righteousness of God is working in you, it creates peace in your mind and healing in your body. It makes you able to stand boldly in God's presence without a sense of guilt or shame. And it gives you a sense of belonging as a member of God's family. This righteousness is freely available to anyone who makes Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life. If you would like to receive God's power into your life to make things right, then pray this prayer with me. Just repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again from the dead so that I could live. I receive the life of God now in Jesus' name. Praise God. You've become a member of God's family and you're now born of God. You've received the righteousness of God in your spirit. And as you develop in your relationship with God and follow the instructions that God shows you in his word, that righteousness will extend into every area of your life and make things right in your spirit, soul, and body. KCM has a free resource to help you get started in your relationship with God as your heavenly father. It's called the Salvation Package. 
There's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And this small book will teach you about your new identity as a child in God's family. There's also two brochures that will help you learn how to study your Bible and give you a daily reading plan so that you can make time in God's Word a part of your life. Spend time fellowshipping with God by reading His Word and spending time in prayer, and you will begin to renew your mind to His way of thinking and acting. As you follow the instructions God gives you in His Word, you will see His righteousness make things right in every area of your life. To request your salvation package, just go to kcm.org and we'll send it to you absolutely free. I just heard this in my spirit. Someone, at least one, said today, I am so glad I watched this broadcast. I am glad you made the decision to watch this broadcast yes. today. It's important, absolutely important. It's important to DVR the thing. It's important to get the notes. It's important to do every little thing that is available to you through these broadcasts and through all of the tools that God has given us. An airplane is just a tool. Uh, that pen is just a tool. This is not just a tool. This is God in my arms. <laughs> Amen. But when I realized it's a blood covenant, then I just marked all the healing scriptures so they're not all that difficult to find. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not ready to make certain announcements yet, but some major changes have been made. And I, I'm in, I've, I've just stepped over into a, a, another level and uh, in the healing ministry and so forth. And I'll, I am not ready to say anything about it all that much yet, but it's good. I'm glad you did. And you make the decision now, you're gonna be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, Brother Copeland, I, that little thing down there says record. Don't you know how to do that on your DVR? DVR, do very record. <laughs> <laughs> well, GPS is go preach somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland reminding you that God loves you and we love you and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Learn more about who you are in Jesus and who he is in you. Request the salvation package free on kcm.org slash salvation.